Good evening, math friends. Tonight's video is Lesson 7.6, Part 2. Rename fractions and mixed numbers. Tonight we're working on page 143 in your Go Math book, and here's what I want you to write down as your essential question. Only what I underline. How can you rename fractions greater than 1 as mixed numbers? Go ahead and write down what I've underlined as your essential question, and we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, we're going to continue our work on page 143. We're going to be working on number 9, and we're going to focus on writing our improper fraction, or fraction greater than 1, as a mixed number now. So we know that 31 sixth is an improper fraction because the numerator is greater than the denominator. 31 is greater than 6. So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to change this to a sum of fractions. So I know that I'm going to start pulling out holes from 31 6. I know that a hole out of 6 is 6 6. So I have 6 6. Now my goal is to add up to 31 6. So far I have 6 6. I know I can add another 6 6 because this makes 12. Another 6 6 makes 18. Now I have 24. And another 6 6. I would be at 30 sixths. Well, I know I can't add another 6 6 because I'd go over 31. But if I'm at 30 sixths and I want to get to 31 sixths, I can add a 1 sixth. Now that I have all of my holes in my addition here, I'm going to count how many holes I have all together. Well, I have one, two, three, four, five holes. So I'm going to write down five holes and I have a one sixth. So 31 sixth is equal to five and one sixth as a mixed number. Now I can check my work by doing multiplication and addition. I can say six times five, well that gives me 30, and 30 plus one is 31, and my denominator stays a sixth. So five and one sixth is correct as our mixed number. All right, let's look at number 10. Number 10 is 20 tenths. Now we're going to rewrite 20 tenths as a mixed number. So we're going to pull out the holes and turn it into a sum of fractions. I know that 10 tenths is a whole. So I have 10 tenths. Now my goal is get to, to get to 20 tenths. 10 tenths plus 10 tenths. Well, that equals 20 tenths, and I don't have any more left to go. So now I can see how many holes do I have? I have one, two holes. So that means that 20 tenths is equivalent to two holes, and we don't have a fraction next to our whole number. It goes in evenly. All right, let's look at number 11. Now, boys and girls, I'm going to let you try number 11 on your own. Remember, turn it into a sum of fractions by pulling out the holes. Your goal is to get to 15 eighths. Go ahead and try this on your own and press play whenever you're ready to go over the answer together. All right, here's what I have. Check your work with me. Now I have that our whole is 8 eighths. Now I pulled out an 8 eighths. Now I have to get to 15 eighths. Well, if I added another 8 eighths, that would give me 16 eighths, which is too much. So I added a 7 eighths. Now that's one whole and 
and a 7 eighths. So this is our mixed number. Now, boys and girls, there is another way to solve these types of problems. It takes a little bit longer, but I'm going to go ahead and show you another way. Now, what we can do is we can use unit fractions to equal 15 eighths, which would mean that we would pull out one eighth at a time until we got 15 of them. So it would look like this. Okay, so what I have here is I have 15 1 eighths, which it would equal 15 eighths. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to circle how many it would take me to equal a whole. Well, I know 8 eighths is a whole, so I would need to circle 8 of them. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I'm going to go ahead and circle 8 of them, which makes a whole. Now I need to see if I can circle another 8 to make another whole or to see what I have left. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Well, that does not make a whole. So I can turn this into a mixed number now because I can see that I have one group which equals a whole and I have seven eighths here. So this turns into one whole and seven eighths left over. So both ways will give you your answer. Um, the first way that we've learned it is a little bit quicker but we could do both ways to change our improper fraction to a mixed number. Okay, let's look at number 12. We have 13 sixths. Now, friends, I want you to try number 12 on your own and then we will check it together. Now, I have pulled out wholes from 13 sixths. So I know a whole is six sixths and I my goal is to get to 13 sixths. So I have six sixths plus six sixths. Well, that makes 12 sixths plus a one sixth makes 13 sixths. Now I can count how many holes I have. I have one, two holes and a one sixth left over. I can check my work by saying six times two is 12 and 12 plus one is indeed 13 six. Now, if you chose to use unit fractions, here's how your work would look. So I have my unit fractions here and I have 13 one sixth. I know that I need to circle six of them to make a whole. So there is one whole and another six makes a whole. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So, so far I have two holes and then I have this one six left over. So there is both strategies to change your improper fraction to a mixed number. All right, let's look at number 13. For number 13, I want you to try this one on your own and then we'll check our work when you get done. Go ahead and press pause. Okay, here's what I have. I went ahead and turned it into an addition problem by pulling out the holes and I have to get to 23 tenths. So I pulled out a 10 tenths, which is, which is my hole plus another 10 tenths, so far that gives me 20. Then plus another three tenths gives me 23 tenths. Now I can say I have one, two holes and a three tenths left over. So boys and girls, you should have two holes and three tenths. Go ahead and give yourselves a star next to your answer for number 13 for me, please. 
All right, friends, we're on page 144 for our homework questions. Number one is asking you to find which mixed number is equivalent to 16 thirds. Number two says Stacy filled her one half cup measuring cup seven times. That's very important that we know that it's seven times to have enough flour for a cake recipe. How much flour does the cake recipe call for? So you're gonna have to figure out what her improper fraction is if she has one half cup seven times and then change that to a mixed number. Then I want you to make sure that you are doing all the questions on page 144. So three through six also. All right, boys and girls, it's time for you to assess yourself. You're going to let us know if you feel like you are a novice, level one, an apprentice, level two, a practitioner, level three, or an expert, level four. I hope you have a great night, and we will see you tomorrow in class. Bye.